Everything about this T56 install has been a little complicated, and I'll show you in this final video some problems I ran into and how I was able to fix them. So the first two videos in this series were about getting the factory tunnel cut out enough to squeeze that big, bulky, long T56 into place. And we ran into an issue that I knew was coming, and that was the cross member and how to get the right down angle on the drive shaft so the drive line angles would be correct in the car and it won't rattle itself to death at 50 miles per hour. So once all that was sorted, it was time to move on to putting the new tunnel in and getting the floor all sealed back up. Now I'm not going to harp on it too much, but this preformed tunnel cap that I bought was one of the worst decisions I've made on this car so far. And I'm going to show you why as we go along, but that rear section kind of gave me some fits and I literally have no clue what they were thinking when they designed this and put that in there. But we'll get to that in a minute. So the first step in this is to make sure we get the shifter hole cut correctly and that the front of the tunnel is indexed correctly on the firewall. That way it will fit in there properly and we'll, all the sides will fit and it'll seal up the front side of it and hopefully seal up the back side of it. But once all that's kind of referenced and indexed, then we have to figure out where the shifter hole is going to go. And that's what we're doing here is just cutting, measuring, and figuring out how big the hole needs to be and where it needs to go in the tunnel and then doing a little bit of cutting. Now this is one of those spots where I've made a lot of mistakes in the past. And if you cut the shifter hole too big, then you've got a lot of work to go back and repair it. So I always cut the hole a little bit small and I can slowly open it up from there. But the idea is to get a nice tight fit around the shifter body so you don't have air and exhaust gases and everything else coming back up into the passenger compartment. So this part's a little critical and again, just take off a little bit of material at a time and that way you'll be better off when it's all done. Now this is one of those little areas where I ran into some problems. This is just regular old 16 gauge material. It is not that thick, but for whatever reason I was going through cutoff um, wheels like crazy. I bet you I went through five or six of them in, you know, cutting out the tunnel, uh, some pieces on the, uh, you know, on the front side of this, and then, you know, cutting out the shifter hole, and then some other, you know, cuts that I had to make later on. So kind of crazy, but uh, whatever reason, I mean, just things slow you down, and it's just one of those little things you don't plan on, and I think that's why this took way longer than I uh, anticipated that it would, but anyway it's just just a matter of getting uh you know the shifter like i said the shifter hole cut out in a nice small section so you can you know work easy and slowly open it up to get where you want to, to be to fit right and then once you have it you know settled in there then it's very easy at that point you got the shifter hole reference and you got your reference at the front of the tunnel and that's just a matter of forming things around that So for sure that nice tight fit around the shifter body is, is important to me and I wanted to get it right and finally got it all done and settled and, and ready to go back together. But that's when we st I started running into some issues with the rear part of this tunnel and I'm going to have to address them right away because this is ridiculous. So for the life of me, I thought of every single possible way this tunnel could go back together and how it would work with this funky end cap that they put on there. And honestly, unless maybe it was for a, a Buick or a Cutlass or a GTO or some other A body that I've never had my hands on before, maybe there's a reason for it. But in a Chevelle, it's absolutely useless. So I just hacked the thing out of there to get rid of it so I could start to, you know, figure out a better way to put all this thing together and, and you know, finally start making some progress. But this one had me stumped for a while, and again, maybe there was a reason behind it, but there's no instructions with this uh, this tunnel patch that I bought, so uh, God only knows why they put it in there. And certainly on projects like this, you're going to have the, the patch panel in and out a hundred different times and or more, and, you know, continue to, you know, kind of tweak it and, and make adjustments and make sure that you're, you know, you're centered and you've got every 
spot covered and, and bending the existing tunnel and, and shaping and, and remolding the, the patch panel to, to get them to fit. And that's one of the nice things about working with sheet metal. It's very forgiving. It's very easy to work with, but it just takes a little bit of muscle and a little bit of patience. And uh, sometimes that wears a little bit out, you know, depending on how long you work with it. And, you know, if you're trying to get it to do one thing in just one way, it doesn't go. So, it, it's again it's one of the things i love but it is kind of also a bit of a pain but uh it certainly is fun to kind of work you know without a little bit of tools and just kind of work with your hands and, and form it and bend it and move it around where you need it now one thing became very obvious at the beginning of this is it, this tunnel is very small this patch panel is very small and i get it you know you don't take out a lot of material keep as much of the factory material as you can uh, certainly i've tried to do that here the problem with that was is no matter how little material I took out at the start, this patch panel never quite got where it needed to go. And all, I had to make too many adjustments to it to get it shaped right, to get it bent around the tunnel properly. And so even taking out a minimal amount of material and kind of going a little easy on it, it was very, very obvious that I was going to have to add some material to the sides of it. That ended up being material on both sides. So again, I feel like I, I removed a little bit of material here, but not a lot of it. So again, I mean, if there was some instructions with this that, that made it a little bit clearer, great, you know, then maybe I would have screwed it up on my own and would have had to fix it. But quite honestly, I had to add about four inches of material down on the passenger side and about three inches down on the driver's side so I could get everything formed right, get it set in there correctly so it had the coverage that I wanted, covered up the, the hole that I cut and, you know, fit everything down in there so it had good clearance on all the other stuff on the side of the transmission. So it was a little bit of cutting and, and, you know, a little bit of welding and a little bit of reforming some stuff. But really, at the end of the day, you know, if it fits better, then these are just adjustments that you're going to have to make. Now, I was I anticipate this when I build a tunnel from scratch or if I cut the top of the factory tunnel off and use it as the top of my new tunnel and just build the sides down. I know I'm going to have to do that. But I didn't anticipate all the work that I did on, on this tunnel piece uh, that I bought off the shelf. So, again, it was another reason for me to, to not ever do this again. Good idea in theory, but quite honestly, I would have probably made this a little bit different myself. But, hey, I guess, you know, I'm not paying for it, um, you know, to, to manufacture it and then try to figure out a selling price on it and, and make a little bit of money and you know, continue to make them. So anyway, neither here nor there, but, uh, you know, that's all this is here is just, just fixing the, the shortcomings of this, uh, tunnel patch and trying to make it fit what I'm working with. And once I got the tunnel all welded up the way I wanted it, it was just a matter of cleaning the, the floor and, and trying to get everything ready to, to assemble back together. Most of the, the, you know, prep work on the tunnel, uh, went well. However, uh, I started to run into some problems. Uh, the first one is my little two-inch uh, grinder here. Uh, I broke the head off of it, and I broke the backup one. Now, these are a hard plastic one. I, I had some nice, uh, you know, hard rubber ones that were a little more forgiving, but for some reason, I cannot find that anywhere, and uh, yeah, so I broke the grinder. No big deal. I've got other tools to do that. Uh, next thing, unfortunately, is the, uh, uh, I ran out of shielding gas, so no more welding for me today. So the good news is at least got all the major fabrication work done on, onto the patch panel. I got everything as cleaned up on the inside of the tunnel, uh, on the car as possible. So the good news is uh, I'm ready to go back in. I just need more shielding gas. So, you know... A lot of little details here on this one. Again, you know, I wanted to try it this way. You know, if an off-the-shelf piece would work, you know, how well would it do? You know, would I like it? Would it fit well? Would I have enough material? You know, or would it be a bigger pain in the backside? And that's what it was. It was a huge pain in the backside. Now, I can see where it would be a little bit better 
you know, depending on, you know, maybe a different way of doing this. And, and, you know, maybe that tunnel, they designed it to be a little flatter in the car, but I tend to like to follow the factory contour where it slopes down from the firewall, you know, down to the tunnel and, and, you know, has a nice good flow to it and the carpet will set a little bit better on it. So uh, again, you know, I guess hindsight's twenty twenty, but you know, it was a, it was a good project. It was something I wanted to try. Uh, didn't quite uh, work out the way I wanted to a lot more work than I anticipated. That's for sure. Um, but the good news is, is, is pretty much it's done. Um, I do need to do a little bit of trimming and then there are some additional pieces that I need to make, uh, the backside of this tunnel. And then, uh, I should be able to get it all welded in, get it seam sealed and, and she'll be ready. So next thing is transmission is coming back out, uh, to be sent off to get some hardened shafts put in it, uh, raise the, uh, horsepower level that it's able to handle a little higher. And that way the, the big block won't, uh, you know, snap the thing in half when we uh, get rolling with it. So anyway, a, a couple of different ways of doing this. I did this uh, t- tunnel video on the El Camino when I put the T56 in that car uh, and now the one on the Chevelle, two entirely different ways. But uh, looking back on it, I would go the El Camino route again. It's it's the way my I was taught how to do it years ago because you didn't buy patch panels like this off the shelf. You made your own and you reused material where you could, and that's the way you did it. So uh, that's certainly the way I would do it again in the future. And, and you know, it's certainly not the last car I'll put a you know, a big uh, six-speed manual transmission, and I absolutely love these, and (laughs) I'm going to love it in the Chevelle again, too. So anyway, if you have any questions about the entire series, don't hesitate. You know, please leave them down below. I'd be glad to answer any of the fabrication questions, you know, any uh, best practices, you know, things that you're going to need beforehand, tools, whatever questions you may have. Um, We'll we'll get this all sorted out and, and, and done and, and, you know, welded back up into the car here pretty quickly and, you know, got bigger things coming. So if you got any questions, don't hesitate, leave them down below and we will catch you on the next one.